Valentina and I plan to stay a few days and talk about our relationship together. As you may know, we had a long distance relationship, so uh, and this is only my third time seeing her. Uh, so we plan to be together for a few days and decide if we would um, stay together or not. Valentina and I met in March or April of 2022. Uh, we met on Tinder and I had an, an offer on my Tinder profile that we'd go on vacation together. Uh, so we spoke for about a month and then I came to Bogota. Uh, I was only here for about 12 hours. We went for dinner together. I went back to my hotel and then we met at the airport and we went to Cancun together. Uh, we spent about a week in Cancun. Uh, we did excursions every day and really it was just a, a perfect week. Uh, the thing is, when we went, we agreed we would just go as friends, and that uh, you know she had asked me if I had as assumed that you know she had to have sex with me or anything like that, and I said no, I'm not some sex crazed animal or anything like that, uh, and that we would just go as friends. Uh, well, over the next couple days together, she um, she wondered like why I hadn't tried to kiss her, why I wasn't more close with her, and I said, well, I, I told you we were just going as friends, um, but she had told me that. Um, that everything was good and she liked being with me and um, after a few days um, we uh, while we did excursions at night we went out and, and partied um, and when we did that uh, you know there's plenty of drugs alcohol and then uh, sex afterwards yeah so we had our time in Mexico and then uh, at the end of uh, our trip we discussed what would happen for the future and if we'd continue talking uh, well, we decided that we'd continue talking and decide if we'd want to have um, a long-distance relationship together, even though at the beginning we said we didn't want that. Um, so after the trip, we continued talking. Um, we talked every day. We'd send each other's pictures and videos, um, talk about our history, our family, that sort of thing. Uh, I met the family in Bogota in September. Um, and during that time, uh, pretty much every time I was with Valentina, we we did a lot of uh, tussy, we had a lot of alcohol, and, and we had a lot of sex. Um, but overall, the relationship was, uh, I'd say, a normal, long-term relationship. Uh, we didn't really have any problems. Of course, we had some dis disagreements. Our cultures are, are very different, so we had to accept that part of it. But um, we made the best of the time that we had together. Yes, uh, I was in love with Valentina. Um, when we first met, I thought she had a really good energy and we had a really good time together. Um, and over time, as we got to know each other more, um, I noticed, yeah, we had very different lives, but um, it seemed like we were a really good match for each other. And yes, I was in love with her. So at the apartment, um, I had got there first, and um, that uh, first morning I was there, I went and got uh, laser hair removal, um, and then later in the day, I um, picked up Valentina at her at uh, her apartment, and we went back to the Cappadocia department after. Uh, when we got there, uh, uh, we I guess first settled, and then uh, went out for dinner to a sushi restaurant. And then when we got back, uh, we started drinking. So Valentina ordered uh, limes and then a bottle of Don Julio uh, to our apartment. And she picked that up. And then um, she also ordered, um, through one of her contacts, she had uh, Tussie delivered to our apartment. And there's a video of her uh, going out to get the drugs. And um, she had, I paid for them, but she had about four bags of Tussie is what she, she uh, ordered from her friend. Uh, we started using the tussy, we were drinking, we also had a, a hookah that I had bought last time I was here in September and she brought that as well, so we had the hookah. Um, but, so we did that after dinner, um, we also had sex after the drugs and alcohol and then uh, she had to go work at the Nexus Discoteca at uh, 2 or 3 in the morning, I don't remember the exact time. But we left for the discoteca and she had her work for about an hour. I sat behind her at the, the DJ booth. Uh, it was me and a, a, another DJ that was performing next. 
um, but we had brought uh, one of the four bags to the discotheca and we had more tussi there. The owner of the club also brought us more uh, just free alcohol. And then after Valentina performed, uh, uh, her and I and the owner of the club and his wife and then one other woman, I don't know, I don't remember her name or, her, or who she was, but um, the owner of the club shared his tussie with us and I remember that the tussie we had was uh, purple and his tussie was like orange in color. But uh, we essentially were drinking and, and doing drugs and talking the whole night or the whole morning I guess at that point. And then my guess is between like 6 and 8 in the morning, uh, we left the club. Um, I just remember that it was still uh, like it was daytime out, there was full sunlight. And then we got into the Uber to go back to the Cappadocia apartment. But I don't, quite frankly, I don't remember the car ride back. Um, I just remember waking up the next morning or, or really I think the afternoon and seeing that my shoes were still on, Valentina and I, and I were in bed together, we still had all our clothes on. I had a horrible hangover, I know uh, Valentina did too. Um, um, from there, uh, like, I guess I, I need to explain that. Um, like in the United States, all the bars and clubs, they all close at two in the morning. So uh, when I was at Nexus, we were out uh, much later than that, I just wasn't used to that. Um, but we got up and had uh, lunch. It was like soup and chicken. Um, we called Silvana. We talked to her brother. We ordered pizza for dinner. Um, but after that, we uh, started up the party again. And we had more drugs, alcohol. We smoked the hookah, listened to music. Um, we had a good time that night. Um, so here we are the next day. We're partying again. It was just a, a lot of partying in a short time. And from there, I don't exactly remember what happened. We both fell asleep is the last thing I remember. You know, that's an in interesting question because the reality is that every piece of evidence is positive for me. The thing is my side of the, the story and what really happened hasn't been shown to Columbia or to the world. Uh, but soon everyone will see that I'm the only person telling the truth and I have all the proof uh, to show it. Really the mom, the friend, the club owner, the ex-boyfriend, really all of them are lying. And on top of it, Columbia has decided to deny my rights. Uh, for example, my capture was completely illegal. Um, and there, there's a whole list of things that, uh, uh, ways that Columbia has denied my rights. Um, but one of the biggest is that I'm not even allowed to show evidence. So really, the, one of the purposes of this interview is that I can get out my side of the story, uh, show all the proof that uh, my attorney has, um, and then I'll testify in court. But at least the world has, shown, has been shown my side of the story. Yeah, so my life in the U.S. was... Um, was really easy. I had a really good job uh, before I had had a family. Of course, I was going through a divorce, uh, but those things are normal events in life. But really, my life was quite easy. I, I made, uh, I had a good job. I made good money. Um, I worked out every day. Um, so no, everything was completely normal. I had no problems with the law in any regard. But no, it was a, a normal life. So my message to the family is that uh, I feel completely horrible about what happened. Uh, I wish it didn't happen. In fact, I wish um, that I could trade places with Valentina and I was dead and she was still alive. Um, I have no ill will towards the family or, or anyone in Colombia. I understand. I, of course, I can't understand completely what they're going through. Um, but um, in my past, my son had cancer and I almost lost him. Um, Valentina's family, they, you know, they did lose her, and I know that they, um, they hate me right now, and I have empathy for that, um, but uh, their feelings are completely acceptable, and I just wish them the best, the best going forward. And I'm sorry about what happened. I feel horrible.
Yeah, so life in prison, it's it's definitely hard. Uh, it's a big change for me. Uh, just because I never had a problem with the law, I never expected to have a, a problem with the law. Um, you know, prison has a lot of different personalities, so I've had to uh, adjust to that. Um, but I've been here about a year now at the time of this recording. About seven of those months I had in, in Calabozo, where I only had about an hour outside every day. And I could only read books, so I've read all the books that we have in English three times now. Um, but you know, I'm reminded that God said that life on earth was never meant to be easy, so I try to remain positive. Um, but now that I'm in the, the regular population, uh, I use my time to like work out and lift. Um, and then the place that I'm staying is for the uh, uh, people being extradited, to most of them to the United States. Um, so I've also started to teach English um, to the other inmates uh, so they have an easier time in the U.S. Yes, uh, so since uh, the state of Columbia will not allow me to show evidence, uh, I, ha I am giving approval to my attorney to, and I've given access uh, to him to all the files that I have digitally uh, that will help set me free and I am authorizing him to release those files as needed uh, so that Columbia and the world can see that um, I should be going free, I'm innocent, and that and all these proofs plus my testimony will, will help me do that.